well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. What just happened? It is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and Blood and Guts, AEW's um, answer to war games. Ugh, my mouth. I got a uh, accidentally got some um, compressed air in my mouth. So, sorry. Blood and guts. AEW's answer to war games and um, one of their special episodes that they like to do, which is really really good. And since they only run four pay per view events a year, they can build up to a big event in the middle. And we got blood and guts. So our card was was a it was a nice nice card an okay card, but uh, what happened? Let's let's dive into kind of the quote unquote prelim matches before we get into blood and guts. So show opened up with our tag team match: uh, Kenny Omega and Michael Nakazawa taking on the team of John Moxley and Eddie. Kingston. Now, when this match first got started, Don Callis was coming out talking about Kenny wasn't in the building. He uh, decided to sit this one out. And the guys on the announced us were like, well, um, that's not true because Kenny's backstage. We've seen him. Uh, he then uh, attacked uh, Kingston and Monty from behind. This match was a little bit of a mess, but but it got better as a word on because these are all veterans. Even though Michael Nakazawa was kind of a comedy guy, he is still a quality worker. And they just wouldn't have anyone just team up with Kenny Omega. So um, it was solid action, some good back and forth. But ultimately it showed how much of a bitch that Kenny is. Because after he walked out on Mike, um, Mike got hit with some type of move uh, from <laughs> Mox and Eddie and that was it this match went about 9 minutes but afterwards they were attacked by the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks and then Kenny came back out and they gloated and they stood tall over Box and um, Eddie. So this this is this is far far from over between these um, Mox and Eddie and, and um, Kenny Omega. It's, this is not this is not even close to being done. As we all know, Mox and Eddie can hold a grudge. Now, uh, second match on the was Cody Rhodes versus Q T Marshall. This was the natural conclusion to the nightmare factory versus the the nightmare yeah the nightmare factory versus the factory storyline but guess what it ain't over um this was solid you even though he's been you know more so used as a teacher and he's had some big spots qt marshall is a very good and very capable worker in the ring and we know what cody can do we know what cody can bring these two put on a nice little match. And you know, Cody, Cody's got to have a long fucking match. This one, 12 minutes. And usually I will complain about Cody's matches going on. But this show that QT knew, knew what he was doing. And he knows Cody very, very well. I mean, QT hit Cody with the crossroads. Cody kicked out. Cody hit. Um, Cody hit QT with the tombstone. QT kicked out and QT had all these little tricks up his sleeves but in the end Cody hit the hit the crust was right QT kicked out so Cody decided to finish him off put him in a figure four Cody was bleeding of course because Cody always bleeds Um, and Cody wins QT taps and after the match Anthony Google comes out punches Punches Cody in the gut, lays Union Jack on top of Cody, and we gotta keep it pushing. 
Uh, I like Anthony Gogo. I need a finisher better than a gut punch. Like, something better than that. Please, 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 please. Um, Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky were being interviewed. And they were calling out Darby, saying they were coming for that ass. Darby decided to attack both of them. He, he was doing a good job, but then he ran into that damn numbers game. As he, as he hit a, call, a high, high coffin drop on Ethan Page. Scorpio Sky was like running at running at uh, Darby with a trash can hit him. They beat him up and then threw him down a flight of stairs. And these are concrete stairs at stadium. So, you know, this is something that Darby wanted to do because he loves doing these crazy ass fucking stunts. This is solid. Um, I like to see where they're going to go. Where they're going to go here with uh, Cody. I mean, not Cody, Darby. Next up, we had Britt Baker in action. And whenever they say in action, uh, it's a squash match. And this is exactly what this was. This went one minute. She was facing Julia Hart. And they're, they're, they're a capable woman on the roster. And I get it. Britt is using the whole, well, I just need to get wins to climb the ranking. So I'm going to just face nobodies. Uh, this not this doesn't instill confidence in me that she can beat Hikaru Shida. It just doesn't. Uh, Taz had a, brought back his Taz technique, broke down Christian and his frog splash and his um, kill switch and showing him everything that's wrong with him. And I listen, I love the Taz technique. This is great. Next up, we had uh, Fatal Four Way Tag Team Elimination Eliminator Match: uh, it's the Varsity Blondes versus SU, the Claimed and Jurassic Express. Uh, this should have had just kind of a little bit more of a story. Whereas, in effect, what I mean is that SU is the number one contender, so why are they in this Eliminator match? But everyone got to shine. All the teams got to shine. The finish was obvious because they remember SU said that whatever the next match they lose, they're going to break up. So you knew SU was going to win. SU won. Um, whatever. This is, this is your standard. Excuse me. Your standard AEW tag match. Tony was interviewing Kenny in. Wanted to announce that the one and two guys in the rankings that would be Pac and Orange Cassidy would face each other next week with the winner facing um, Kenny at double or nothing. Kenny was like, okay, I get Pac. Pac's beat me. He's made me tap. But OC, why in the hell does he get this opportunity? And Orange Cassidy was out there. Kenny talked down to him, took his glasses. Okay. I think Kenny going to learn today about disrespecting the OC. And then Miro called out um, Darby out that. Miro called out Darby Allen. See, I don't care if you're dead or alive. You're going to show up next week. You can put that title on the line. So next week, TNT title will be on the line. Darby Allen versus Miro. But now, 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 now. On to blood and guts. So, this is the answer to War Games. And if you don't know what War Games is, go back and listen to last week's episode of the High Risk Wrestling Podcast, where I talk to you about the history of War Games. Uh, that's what you should be doing every Saturday. So, uh, this was different. The This was back to the old War Games, where the, where the um, top was on... The top was on the the, the, the the two rings. And it's poetic that Tully Blonkard was there as he participated in the first workings match. And poetic that JR and Tony Schiavone were on commentary as they called the first workings match. So we got some history here. We got some living legends here. Now Expectations were high for this. Very, very, very high. Did it deliver? Yeah, it did. So, 
the match starts off with Sammy and Dax. And it's always interesting of it's always interesting to see who's going to start the match. So I'm surprised like it was Sammy and Dax. I'm I'm really surprised that it wasn't Sammy and Sean. You know, keep the rivalries going. But they did a good job. Sammy was just go nonstop, and Dax really never had a chance until Sean came in. And he had a chair ready. And next thing you know, Catch is bleeding. Right? So, the man advantage, Ortiz comes in next. Now, you knew for a fact that Jericho and MJF would be last in this match. That was very, very obvious. I and mean, actually, kind of knew who was going to win this match. But Sammy tried going for a springboard and springboard, springboard, and he uh he looked he tripped and fell and looked like he got legit hurt. But right before that, he had hit a nice step over um, Spanish fly from the from the middle of the ring. So Sammy's crazy. So now we got now we got Ortiz, Sammy, Sean Spears, Cash, Dax, Dax, and then Cash comes in, FTR's in, and it's your standard match. Ortiz comes in. Now we cooking with oil. Brain busters. The wood gets exposed and catches taking back drops and power drivers onto the wood, getting thrown into the fence and it's, it's, people just bleed. Warlow comes in, and he's just fucking niggas up. He was just fucking dudes up, hardcore. So once Warlow comes in, you know Hager's gonna follow. So here's the thing. This match lived their expectations that they're going at it. So remember, your match doesn't officially start until all five members of each team are in the ring. Now we come down to MGF, we come down to Jericho at this point. Everybody's bleeding, the match is going on. Wartlow. Makes a comeback for his team because the inner circle is just straight dominating. They are dominating. So, then what we have here is MJF somehow is able to climb out of the cage. And Jericho follows him to the top. And is down to these two men. Now remember, as I say, this was different. This goes back to the original War game. So the only way to win this match is by making a member of the opposing team submit or quit. That's it. No pinfalls. <sighs> These two are fighting on the top. Jericho's got the walls locked in. MGF hits a low blow. Arm bar. Jericho's not tapping. And MGF is just stomping away. Brings out that ring. Gives him the punch. Takes Jericho, who's bleeding at this point. MJ's got a crimson mess himself, and he throws. He throws Jericho off the side of the cage. And he did this right after Sammy surrendered, so he wouldn't throw Jericho off. And he did it anyway. MGF is a bad boy. And the pinnacle wins. The cage was big. The match was brutal. Crowd loved it. This is a really, really big crowd. Um, was this as memorable as the stadium stampede? I think I like the stadium stampede just a little bit more. But uh, this was fun. This was a fun little show, a fun little jaunt. And I enjoyed Blood and Guts. So what just happened? Well, the pinnacle one. That just happened. 
thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening. I'm your host. I'm your boy, Jeremy Pierce, the head of the table. Come back this Saturday with the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. We'll, we'll be looking at the Black Wednesday releases from last year. Um, kind of going to take a quick look at each person's career and then uh, where they are now. How have they recovered? But I'm your host. I'm your boy, Jeremy Pierce. Thank you. Make love, not war. Peace.